Hey, HTDA, and today we're going to get some purple signs going as well as do some other really fun stuff. First things first, I'd like to thank Austere, Panic, Sky Shredder, Chapster, Will Loker, and 23 Kerber for becoming members of this channel. Your support is very much appreciated, and you will now get early access to everything I do on this channel. And your names will start showing up on the actual map as soon as I actually visit this planet. So in the next two episodes, we're going to work towards that. So there's a couple of small things that I added to my build over here. As you can see, I now have a giant power bank in the back of my defense line over here. Why? Well, mainly to make sure that I have, I'm storing up some power in case I have a power spike here. The power spike specifically happens when you start placing planetary defenses. Which is the next thing I started to do. So these planetary shields are actually really um, power hungry. So don't place too many of these at the same time. Just, just place one or two at the same time and then let them charge up. And once they're kind of done, place a few others. Uh, unless, of course, you're expecting a uh, very early attack. So do start placing them around your most vital facilities. If you have a few miner, miners taken out or a couple of turbines or whatever when you get attacked that's not the biggest problem you ideally also want to cover these but start with things like your production facilities and your malls speaking of the mall i added in pretty much every building that i haven't hadn't really added in that we can construct at the moment um, including things like implosion cannons that i don't really use but we also uh, for example have now the particle colliders which you can't actually build just yet because we don't have the frame materials in production uh, but basically I'm just trying to kind of finalize my mall over here so I don't have to worry about it in the long run. Something else that I've mentioned before but you probably start noticing that as you're playing as well is that you have processors being in a really high demand. Now at, to be honest at this point it's probably not going to be a problem. You can always just grab whatever you have stocked up in terms of the processors and dump them in whichever uh, logistic distributor seems to be ignored it's not really a problem but honestly um, it's more ideal to just start producing a little bit more processors now we also happen to need processors for the information matrix or purple science if you want to call it that so might as well hit two birds with one stone does it actually work i'm not entirely sure how that works but let's do it anyway before we do that i actually have to make a little rectification because as someone pointed out in the comments i actually made a small mistake in my turbine build so there's four of these assemblers making gears but you actually need six well actually you need five point something just a little bit over five of these assemblers if you want to completely optimize the build um, but in theory you would need six to comp have it completely functioning at 100 percent the reason i made that mistake is well actually if you just upgrade these assemblers to mark two it's actually the exact amount that you need and i used that math rather than the mark one math however there's an other easy way to solve this just add in a fifth assembler, Mark 1 assembler that it is, in the open space that we have left in this build. And that should have the build functioning at almost full capacity. I think it's like 96%. Um, but that's close enough and you won't notice the difference. And I didn't really want to make this entire build again. I did add in that additional assembler into the build that I have uploaded to DysonSphereBlueprints.com. So if you download my builds, you, see, you should see the correct one or at least the optimized one right there. So you might be wondering, didn't we already have a processor built? And the answer is yes, we do. We have one right over here. But again, I want to re-optimize this based on Mark III bells and everything else that goes along with that. I don't want to reuse an old blueprint. I'm no longer actively making those materials. And remember, I want to optimize it in such a way that we can also use it for the purple signs. Because that's just, again, hitting two birds with one stone. Um, so let's get to it. Now I'm going to switch up the build a little bit to keep it a bit more compact than it would otherwise be. Although, depending on how you space this out, you could actually make it more compact. But I also want to have it look neat and organized. So we have these 16 silicon smelters over here. We have a total of 5 of the uh, smelters for copper on the top row and then one more in the bottom. The reason that I put this one on the bottom is we need 4 of these iron ones. And this makes a nice little square. Then next up, I'm going to break one of my rules and actually build something top-bottom rather than uh, east-west or north-south, I should say. And that's the circuit boards over here. You can also see that I actually directly connected the smelters over here to the assembler. 
because that means it's just a little bit more organized because we have exactly one smelter going to one assembler and then the other four are going to be used elsewhere so this is actually going to go on a belt the iron is also exclusively used for the circuit board so we have this belt going up here and then we have the outgoing belt down here then next on the list are the micro crystalline components that's a mouthful but yeah it's a very long <laughs> component uh, and as you can see, we have this belt going around here and collecting the silicon for that. And then we have the other belt with the coppers going in between. And then we can have a couple of outgoing belts, something like this. They are going to collect a couple of things over here. And then that this is going to go on a belt up here. So we have a nice and organized little facility. So we have eight assemblers making the components and then we need six assemblers making the actual processor. So this is a very small build actually once you upgrade to the Mark II assemblers. And once again, I'm putting these in a box over here so they can be exported to wherever they need, are needed in my mall. And of course, we're going to add an ILS to that. Make sure you align everything nice and neatly with the builds you already have. Adding in some sorters and stuff like that to that, you will quickly notice that your main bottleneck, as long as you're on my playthrough at least, is going to be silicon because we have only a single node of silicon on the actual uh, planet that we are on. Uh, well, that's not on this planet, it's on the other one. Uh, as you can see, we have still a million silicon, so we're in no way in any danger of running out or anything like that. But because it's all in one single node, it's actually pretty hard to extract a decent rate out of that. Now that's something we'll be able to fix soon enough, but before we do that, make sure you set one of your ILSs to actually supply water to your system as well as oil. It doesn't need to be huge amounts, you definitely don't want to set all of your ILSs to supply it to uh, remote supply, I should say specifically, so you can get access to that on other planets. Just have one of them, specifically one that is getting more than it needs, so you can actually access this from the other planet. The reason for that is that I actually want to turn this second planet into a science production hub. And when I mean science production hub, I actually meant, mean something that we can scale to the end game. So that means we're going to build our broadband facility, which is the second thing we need in order to get purple science right here on this planet. Now remember, uh, other than the processors, we need the broadband. I'm just going to aim for one per second. That seems like a, li a, a tiny little amount, but again, don't worry about it. It's going to be more than enough and you don't want to scale up too fast because otherwise you simply won't have the resources to do so. Now, we're going to need a ton of things that we aren't actually mass producing yet. So we need the carbon nanotubes, we need the crystal silicon, and we need plastic. Honestly, this is a really, really annoying recipe, but let's get to it. I like starting with something easy, which the crystal silicon definitely is. So just four smelters making silicon and four smelters making crystal silicon will fix that. Then next up is the graphite, which we're going to have on this belt coming in. At least the coal is, is where this is coming in. And then we have all the graphite unloading on this belt. We're actually turning around here because we need the graphite to go into several other builds as well. However, we also need a tiny little bit of titanium. So I'm actually bringing in the titanium in between these other things going down. And then again, uh, breaking my own rule and building from north to south a little bit just to align these two smelters with the smelters that we already have to kind of keep it all square and nice. When designing a build that is so complicated like the one we're getting now, at least uh, has a lot of different components in it. I kind of like working my way backwards sometimes. So because we already have an end product over here, so this is the crystal silicon that goes straight into the broadband, I figured, well, why not just make the broadband over here? We're going to need some uh, room in between these buildings because we need two more recipes and then we need to be able to export it as well. So we're probably going to export it from the outside uh, and bring it in from the inside and then hopefully make everything else that we need in order to uh, make it. So that's the, uh, the nanotubes as well as the plastic down here somewhere. We actually don't need huge amounts of this. It's just a very slow recipe, but we need quite a few different things. And most of those things are actually related to oil. So I actually decided in this run to build everything from base materials, including anything related to oil. Usually I just make a, a giant oil refinery somewhere and then use the refined oil in my builds as a raw material. And I figured why not just include it in the build we might as well. Uh, we're going to need a total of eight oil refineries in order to process enough oil into refined oil. And remember that that also produces some hydrogen. So we're going to need to export that somewhere else. This is also really the part where it starts paying off labeling your belts because it's really easy to lose track now. So we have the outgoing belt with oil over here. We also need to make some acid. So we have three chemical plants making that. 
The asset actually needs stone and water as well. So we have that coming in as well. So from the belt over here. And then the asset goes out on another belt because we're going to use that in the next three chemical plants that are making plastic. And this is also where we're bringing in the graphite all the way from down here. Because the graphite also needs to go into the plastic. And then we have the exporting belt for the plastic down here. So you can see that's a lot of belts to keep track of. So I really recommend marking up so you can easily see what goes where. We're not quite done yet with the chemical plants though. Because we still need some graphene. We need five of these chemical plants making graphene. Luckily these need the asset as well as the graphite. So by making sure you have your belts in the correct order. You can actually draw the graphite from over here. The asset from over here as well. And then just make sure you're combining everything. So this actually needs the oil. The oil is coming from this belt. It's still in reach. It's three spaces away. So you can draw that in from over here. The graphite from down here. And then... The um, as you can see, this is the most efficient way to place these belts so that you can basically combine the use of belts between different types of facilities. Now, um, of course, this belt needs to be a little bit longer because otherwise it won't actually work. And then we're still not done with the chemical plants because we need a total of four chemical plants making nanotubes. And look, look. Look how nice and tidy this looks. The belts, maybe not so much. So there's different ways you can make this look tidy. Um, but honestly, I don't think it's all that bad. As long as you make sure that the belts over here don't uh, cross each other in too ugly of a fashion. We're going to need to bring in the titanium all the way from up here. So that's a little bit unfortunate, this long belt going down here. But honestly, it's not that bad. Also, we're not quite done yet. Because now we need to bring in the plastic as well as the nanotube all the way up here in between here and then we can have these exporting belts on the outside like i mentioned before and then we are producing exactly one particle collider no that's not a particle collider this is particle broadband that's what i meant uh, we're producing one per second at least we will be once we actually hook all of this up to ILSs. we also have this open space here that i'm kind of left with but that happens to fit a ILS very nicely there we go, I hooked everything up to power to some ILSs as well, and I really, really like how this build looks. It's actually a... It, it, it looks really small and tiny and simple, but there's so much complexity going on here, and I think the end result looks really, really nice. I'm really proud of this one, honestly. Um, so, one broadband per second. Now, all we need to do is add in the build that we just made for the processors. These, this is actually producing two processors per second, which is in the exact amount that we need in order to combine with the one per second broadband. And this is all the materials you need to make one purple science per second. Now I'm gonna need to figure out what is destroying my solar panels and I'll be right back. Okay, I don't know about you, but I'm getting bored chasing the dark fog of my planet. So let's go and fix that. I'm going to switch my missile turrets to also fire at the upper air. That means that any relay station that tries to land on your planet that comes even close to a missile launcher will get shot at, which includes, of course, the signal towers. So by placing a couple of these signal towers all across your planets, it's pretty easy to fend them off. Honestly, I wouldn't go too much in detail about that. Don't try to cover your entire planet with these uh, signal towers. Uh, just keep adding them as you expand and as you keep fighting off the dark fog. And basically every time you plant one of them, that's another area of the planet that's never going to see another relay station land there ever again. However, shooting down relay stations is a very good way to get the hive spist at you and they will send your fle their fleets at you. At that point, you really need the planetary shield generators on every planet that you have a sizable presence at. Typically, they will attack the planet that you have the most production on. But I've seen every now and then um, the fleets going to other planets as well. So I figured, why just not just make sure the planet is actually safe and set some defenses up on both our planets. And let's do so in a very cool way. Now, what I like to do on my planets is actually set up a uh, polar defense line. The reason I like to use the poles is because you're not really using the poles for anything else usually, other than, well, a couple of other things maybe that I will show you later on. Um, but on the production and mining planets, you're not going to use your poles that much. So, uh, might as well put some nice defense lines on there. And as you can see, I made a nice little ring around one of the, uh, the vault lines. And I put a signal tower in every corner now the signal tower is actually placed in such a way that it's almost hitting the middle 
there's a little open area technically that's not covered by the signal tower in the middle but because there's actually a building there the dark fog will never try to land there and there's one on every corner and a little ring of solar panels mostly to help me see where the ring is uh, but it actually kind of looks really nice as well now what we want to do is add some turrets to this and when I say some turrets, I mean a lot of turrets. Uh, because why not just add in as many, many turrets as we can fit? Well, technically, I think we could fit even more turrets on this uh, pole. But, well, I think this is more than enough. The battlefield analysis bases are mostly there just to help you actually build this thing on other planets as well when you're placing down the blueprint. Uh, because this is actually uh, quite a bit of stuff to build. There's a lot of belts in here. There's a lot of solar panels in here and at a couple more lines the idea is basically that this thing is going to power itself also if you place this on a new mining planet for example not only is it going to help you defend that planet it's actually also going to power everything you're doing on that planet initially um, because of course the missile turrets are not going to consume that much power if you're not actually shooting at anything now speaking of power this is complete overkill but i figured why not just add in some accumulators as well this way you can actually store up all of that power that you're um, gathering up through your solar panels and use it in case you're getting attacked to power your shield for example. You can use it to power your missiles but you can also power it while you're expanding. In general I'm really really loving these accumulators now as you can maybe tell in order to make sure you cover some of those spikes in your power production. All in all, this looks really cool and I wish I could show it to you when the fleet is actually attacking. But once the fleet starts attacking, the pole defense coming in action is really cool to look at as well. Um, of course, make sure that you have an ILS in there as well that's actually requesting the missiles. We're going to focus on that at some point, but for now you can just put in the missiles that you have in your other defensive station that you might have on this planet or whatever you were using before. Where is it? Over here. Uh, Alternatively, you can uh, just remove this again and just move the, the missiles elsewhere. You can also just have these, this ILS itself actually request missiles as well and just use this as a kind of a, a backup station as well. Um, there's no dark fog on this planet, so honestly this is not very useful at this point, but it's completely up to you whether or not you want to remove it. Honestly, this looks really, really cool. Now, of course, we're going to get most of the fleets attacking our main planet over here that we are building well everything has right now so we're also going to need some more defense on our home planet because honestly the few missile turrets that we have over here i think it's like it was it 12 or something like that that's not going to cut it for very long we're getting heavy attacks and i'm also not entirely sure why i have these stray units going into my base it's uh it's because the missile turrets are not actually part of my defense line every now and then some stray units get attracted by that and just fly straight through the base. Anyway, they're being picked off, so that's not a problem. Let's add some more fire power to the defense. But we're actually also going to need a place to store our science. Because, well, we're for the moment still producing all our science over here in this, this little starting facility with the three first types of science. But once you hit purple science, I really think you need to start scaling this up. Which is where this build comes in and it looks way more complicated than it is but for most of you I think if you've seen any of my previous playthroughs I've been using this blueprint for quite a while now so let me just walk you through it. There is uh, an ILS over here that's requesting all the different colors of science and then there's an ILS over here that is actually also requesting two colors of science but that will later on also start requesting the antimatter that you need to make white science now the only reason that it's requesting these two or it's actually supplying them but it's not actively supplying anything is because i have these six belts running on the outside two of them are running on the inside over here where this ils comes in and that's because uh and that's why this is actually storing up these two colors because this is where the two colors of science go on so we have three colors of signs on the outside we have two colors of signs on the inside and then the last belt is going to be for the antimatter so for now this is actually going to be able to process science but once we have all five colors and we're working on white signs we actually need to transform those five colors into white science so then we will completely um, um, switch around what this facility does without having to build a completely new facility for that. In the middle, uh, a planetary shield generator that was not in my previous blueprint, but of course I, we need to make sure this thing is protected. And again, the Bellafield Analysis Base is mostly just here to help you build it once you place it. However, I want to take this build a little bit further, or actually a lot further. 
So I cleared out the whole area around the pole where I was initially building to make space for a little bit more. Now, what I want to do is I actually want to produce the science on site as well. Not necessarily the, the raw materials like the uh, broadband and processor that we just made, but the actual science itself, all processed here locally. So what I've done here to facilitate that is because we have five different colors of science and then later on we have the white science as well. We actually need six portions of, well, the pole, I would say, in order to produce that science. Now, I actually like making a couple of these slightly smaller than the others, because right now we only need uh, just a few matrix labs, honestly, in order to make blue and red science, because that's super efficient. And then the other types of science we actually need more space for, specifically the purple and green science. Actually, you need a, quite a lot of a matrix labs in order to make that in large quantities so we need um, two of these spaces to be slightly bigger than the rest so these four on the side or the, the two on the side over here and the two on the side over here are going to contain about six matrix labs uh, next to each other and then we can of course stack those those up and then in the middle over here there's going to be about nine i think uh, depending a little bit on how it fits in because i do want it to actually look nice um, so that's actually 50% more, and those are going to be dedicated towards the purple and green signs. The layout itself is going to be very straightforward, so we're just going to request the materials that we need in order to make a specific color of science. Then we have these belts on the outside going uh, into the matrix labs over here, making a specific color of science, and then just transporting it out on the side over here. Now again, like I said before, we have six of them making blue science over here. We're going to have six of them making red science. And we're basically going to repeat that across the entire section of this pole. At this point, you probably unlocked quite a bit of stacking for the uh, matrix labs, but you don't necessarily need to stack them all the way. I definitely did not do that in the blueprint just to make sure that you can actually build it with some minimal upgrades. But as you can see, I'm still progressing through a lot of those that are related to yellow science and you can already stack them up this high. You're not going to need that for a very long time, but still it's nice to have it ready. Most of this build is actually not going to be doing much until the next few episodes when we're going to really skill this up but we're going to get it ready so this will kick into gear as soon as we do. Now the one part that is actually going to kick into gear, or at least it should, is the one for the purple signs. Because remember we are making all that stuff on the other planet and this has been working for a little while already um, while I was designing all of this. So you can see we are outputting quite a nice amount of purple signs now. That also means that we're actually going to replace the processing facility that we had in the starter build over here collect the three colors of signs that we're making here because remember we're making signs and we can use it we don't need to wipe out this facility or anything like that because we automated all the inputs um, so this can now be exported to our um, polar hub and here you can see all the different colors of signs moving in different directions now we're not producing a massive amount of anything just yet so it's not going to look as cool as it will later on but you kind of see the idea coming to uh, fruition here now, of course, uh, I mentioned something about defense, so let's add some missile turrets to this as well. As you can see, it's not quite as much as we had on the other planet. But honestly, you don't need that much turrets anyway. Uh, it fits nicely in here, and while we're at it, and there you have it, a very cool build that is actually producing all the different colors of science, as well as consuming those different colors of science in a single build. It's also going to be able to switch to making white science later on and then consuming that. Because remember, we have six colors of science over here. So we can use one of these facilities later on to actually, we will produce the white science in the middle and then consume the white science on the outside. So we'll have Five different colors in production here, then the white in production here, and then we're going to consume it on the side, again, keeping all the signs in one place. Well defended, uh, with a power bank on top of that and some power production as well. I'm really, really loving this build. Now, honestly, this build is kind of oversized and really big, uh, so you might want to scale it down a little bit if, if you're... Uh, a little bit more frugal with your resources but honestly we're getting close to the late game so this is where we want to start scaling things up right with purple signs now in production it's actually only a few steps to green signs which will open up the rest of the universe to us so that's going to be really exciting uh, but don't underestimate how much resources you actually need to produce this at a decent speed 
For that reason, we're going to need that third planet back now. Capturing that third planet is not going to be trivial because as you can see it's completely covered in enemy bases. There's only a little bit of open space here honestly to land and everything else is completely taken over by the dog fog. Actually I'm going to show you a fairly easy way in the next episode to take over a planet like this. Um, but yeah that will be the next episode. For now I just want to recap kind of where we are now in terms of our process. So uh, we have a mall set up over here with all the buildings that we need for the end game. We have a small amount of production for every resource that we need in order to make all of that stuff. So just one or two per second, which is more than enough. As you can see, it's not a huge factory like I've mentioned before, but it's actually making a lot of stuff. We are making four different types of uh, colors of science, which we are all consuming over here as well. So as you can see, uh, pretty efficient. Actually, the bottleneck is a red science of all things. So it's really easy to scale those up later on. And this is a facility that will carry us uh, really far away into the end game as well so if you are thinking that this looks like complete overkill we're actually going to be able to utilize pretty much all of it uh, we might actually want to expand the stacking of the matrix labs later on uh, this is really going to last you until the end of the game it is really important though that before you take on a planet like that you make sure you turn your existing planets into a fortress which is exactly what we've done now with our polar hubs with all the missile launchers along with the planetary shield generators that I've been placing around the planet as I was going. The only part of the planet that's not actually covered by it is where the dark fog is already at, so there's not going to be a problem with more dark fog landing here or anything like that. That's not really something I'm worried about. Uh, you could also just decide to completely wipe the dark fog off your planet. There's no real argument against that, other than the fact that these things do actually drop some items that you might want to use later on so they do for example they drop this dark fog matrix which you can actually use to unlock some special buildings so don't do away with them too easily but if they really get out of control you can always set up a farm of this later on somewhere else for now i hope you enjoyed these builds and i do hope to catch you in the next one